Hey everybody! Today we are going to learn how to calculate probabilities using a normal distribution. And some things to remember as we get started is the empirical rule and how to calculate z-scores. Now the empirical rule tells me that 68% of my data is going to be within one standard deviation of the mean, so that's this blue area here in the middle. And 95% uh, of my data will be within two standard deviations, and 99.7% of my data will be within three standard deviations. So that's pretty much everything. Something else we might need to do in this section is calculate a z-score. So just a reminder, the formula there, it's the value, the x value you're, you're trying to find a z-score for, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so for our first example, we're going to look at this, um, this here. The scores on a college entrance exam have an approximate normal distribution with mean mu equals 52 points. Remember, mu is a population mean. And a standard deviation, sigma equals 11 points. So there's my population standard deviation. So first thing I'm going to do is create this normal curve like the one we see for the empirical rule. And so if I take a look at this, just scroll down a little bit. So here's a normal curve. And that line in the middle, that's where the mean always goes. And if I take that 52 and add 11 to it um, multiple times, then I will get each value to the right. So 52 plus 11 gives me the 63, plus another 11, 11 gives me 74, plus another 11 gives me 85. So there's one, two, and three standard deviations above the mean. And then I subtracted 11 on the left to get the 41, 30, and 19. So what that tells me using the empirical rule is that 68% of my data is between 41 and 63. 95% of my data is between uh, 30 and 74. And 99.7% of my data is between 19 and 85. So when I'm asked a question like, about 95% 90 of the x values lie between what two values? Well, that's 30 and 74, because those are two standard deviations from the mean. Another question you might see is, what is the z-score for a particular value? So if x equals 38. So again, I'm using this formula up here, the, um, the value, which is 38, minus 52 divided by 11. And so I got negative 1.27. Let me show you how we do that in Excel over here on the right. So I'm going to stick in uh, the mean was 52, standard deviation 11. And if I want my Excel to calculate the z-score for me, I start with that equal sign. So it's a formula. And I need it to subtract 38 minus 52 before dividing. So to get my order of operations correct, I've got to put parentheses around that in Excel. So it's parentheses, 38 minus, and actually, um, well, I'll put 38 in there, minus, and then I can call the mean right there. Close off those parentheses divided by the standard deviation. And there we get negative 1.27. So what does that mean? Well, the z-score tells us that 38 is 1.2 standard deviations from the mean. Um, and because it was negative, it's to the left of the mean. So that's how I would uh, interpret that number. Okay, so the next question, find the probability that a randomly selected exam score is less than 65, round of four decimal places. So if I want to picture what that looks like, here's the, the normal curve with my 52 at the mean. And I, I put in 65 there and it's less than 65, so I want the area um, to the left of 65. That will be the probability. Okay, and so if I write it uh, in notation, uh, it looks like this here, p of x less than 65. Now, how do I find that probability in Excel? Well, I start with my equal sign, and then I'm going to start typing in normal because I'm dealing with the normal distribution. And you see that norm.dist, that is the one I want. It returns the normal distribution for the specified mean and standard deviation. So I'm gonna just double click on it. And now it's telling me exactly what I need to plug in to figure this out. So I'm gonna plug in my X value, which they gave me a 65, comma, mean is right there. So I'll call that cell, comma, standard deviation. 
And then it wants me to choose between a cumulative distribution function and a probability mass function. We always are going to choose, choose the first one. So you can double click on that, or you can type in one, which means true in binary. So uh, then close off those parentheses and hit enter. And there is the probability that x is less than 65. The next example is find the probability um, that x is more than 70. Okay, now that function we just used for the last example always gives you the area to the left of your x value. So if I do the same thing as I did last time, I'm not going to get what they're asking me for because they're asking me for greater than. They're asking me um, for the area to the right of 70. Now I know the area under that curve is 1, under the entire normal curve is 1, and so if I subtract the, the area to the left, then that will give me the area to the right. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in Excel. So equals, and instead of going straight into that normal distribution function, I'm going to start with a 1 minus, and then type in the normal distribution. And then just as before, I'll go 70. Choose the mean, choose the standard deviation, and I'm going to do one this time. You can type in one or you can choose that true on there and hit enter. And there is the probability that x is greater than 70. Now it's always a good idea to kind of have a mental check of, gosh, did these answers make sense? And if I look at my drawing here and I look at the probability, well, most of the, the area under that curve is shaded, so I expect a high value, something close to 1. So remember, the probability can never be greater than 1. Now, this second one, well, that's a pretty small area, so I expect a pretty small value out of that one. So I'm feeling good about my answers from that. Okay, next one, find the probability. Uh, Oh, and there's a typo there. That shouldn't be a golfer. That should be exam scores. Uh, the exam scores are between 50 and 60. So if I'm drawing this on the normal curve, it looks like this. Between 50 and 60, that little area in the middle. So this is a little different from the last ones. Okay, I need to find the area in the middle. But again, this normal distribution function only gives me the area to the left. So I'm going to start by just finding the area to the left of 60. So equals normal.dist. Okay, and then I'm going to find the area to the left of 50. And if I subtract those two values, it will give me the area in the middle. And I could have done this all in one line uh, here, but I decided to break it up just to make it a little easier to see. So I'm going to hit equals. I'll take the, far, the bigger value minus the smaller value. Hit enter, and there's my answer, 0.3386. Okay, so that's how I can find the probability of a less than, greater than, or between two values. I also want to be able to do the inverse. If I'm given a probability or an area, I want to be able to find the x value that would give me that probability. So one way of asking that question is finding the 80th percentile, for example. So when they give me that percentile, they've given me an area. Okay, and so instead of using the normal distribution function, I'm going to choose the one that was right underneath it this one right here. That one will give you, it does the inverse the opposite of what we've been doing. So I'm going to do norm inverse, and you can see I need to type in a probability, which is the area. Here is going to be 0 0.80. And then it needs the mean and the standard deviation. And that is the x value that would give me an area of 0.8. And one more of these, another way this question could be asked is for something like the first quartile. Again, they're giving me an area. This time it's 0.25, because 25% is a quartile. Um, and they want to find the x value that goes with it. So I'm doing the exact same thing as the last one. Equals norm. And then I want inverse. 
the probability is 0.25 and then give it that mean and standard deviation again. And so the x value that would give me a probability of 0.25 is 44.58. Okay, now let's say I wanted to deal with a standard normal curve. So this means that all of my x values have been converted into z-scores. And let's look at an example. So here I'm just giving the picture. They told me it was a standard normal curve. So what, this, what I know automatically from this is that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And they want me to find the area to the left. Okay, so mean is zero, standard deviation is one. So this is very similar to what we were doing before. I could even use the same function, but it's a little faster if I choose this third one on the list when you type in norm. That S in there is for standard. So I could choose that one, and now all it needs is a z-score and to know whether it's cumulative or not. So here my z-score is negative 1.3, and I'm gonna hit one for true to choose that cumulative distribution function. And there's the probability that z is less than negative 1.3. Now this one is to the right, so I'm going to have to do, like I did before, insert that one minus to give me the area to the right instead of to the left. So one minus norm.s.dist, my z-score is negative 2.3, and I'm going to choose one. Oop, it really wants the parentheses this time, so. So there's my probability 0 0.9893. Now most of that curve was shaded, so I expected a value really close to one like that. Now if they're between, same as before, I'll do each one separately. So 1.5 and then do negative 0.5. and then come over here and subtract those two values. So the larger one minus the smaller one, and they'll give you my answer. And last thing, I could also do the inverse with a standard normal curve. So let's say I'm being asked to find the 85th percentile. There's what my normal curve would look like. I'm gonna start typing in normal again, and fourth one on the list, norm.s.inverse. So there's the inverse for a standard, and all it wants is the probability because it knows the mean and standard deviation. So I type in the area here of 0.85, and I get a z-score of 1.04. And one last example, the 30th percentile, so same thing, norm.s.inverse and 0 0.30 for 30%. And there's my z-score of negative 0.52.